Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning about frames of reference. Frames of reference are very important when talking about motion because they allow us to define what's moving and what's not. Over here we have a picture of the Earth, which is what we usually use as stationary. Now a frame of reference is how we define what is stationary, that is, what isn't moving. We define the frame of reference as stationary. So that means that we choose a frame of reference and we say, this is still, this is what's not moving. Uh, all positions of measurement are made from a frame of reference. Now the most common frame of reference is the Earth, which is pretty reasonable. Now trains, as we, we can see one here, are quite useful for thinking about frames of reference. So let's take a look at a train in motion. Now if we're inside the train, then we can use the train as our frame of reference. And from our point of view, uh, we're fairly still. Things act normally in our frame of reference. You can toss a ball and we'll come back down while you're inside the train. And it's the outside that's moving. And so in this case, our train is stationary. And this picture sort of gives a good illustration of that. Because the train in the middle isn't really moving. I mean, if you were standing outside the train, you'd think it was. But inside, you're stationary. And it's the outside world that's rolling past you. On the other hand, if we use a train station as our frame of reference, then the background is still, the station is still, and the train is what's moving. So we can see here that the train is the object moving here, rather than the background rolling past us. That means that the station is stationary. So we can see that we're not moving. Now, maps and position. Maps are useful for thinking about coordinate systems. Coordinate systems are what we usually use to measure position. Now having Sydney is 70 kilometers away on a big map or an encyclopedia or something would be sort of useless because 70 kilometers away from what? In what direction? It doesn't tell you anything. What we need is a reference point, somewhere to start at. Somewhere we can say, from here, Sydney is 70 kilometers. And so, an instruction like Sydney is 70 kilometers north of Wollongong is a much more useful instruction because we have a point of reference, Wollongong, to base our position on. Now a common way of measuring position is with a coordinate system. So here we have a very simple coordinate system in one dimension. Now these systems can be 1D or 2D or 3D. So if we're measuring a position in 2D then we'll have two axes, an x-axis and a y-axis. So this means that rather than measuring just our position left or right of the center, we can measure left or right or up or down. If we want to measure in three directions, uh, three dimensions rather, then we need another axis coming towards you and going out of the board. And so with a bit of foreshadowing, it can look something like this. And that will be the z-axis. And so with axes like these, we can measure the position of an object in three different dimensions rather than just one. Now coordinate systems are usually stationary. You really don't want to get mixed up with moving coordinate systems. So we take a frame of reference, we put our coordinate system in it, and the coordinate system doesn't move. So where do we say is the middle of the coordinate system? That's a good question. The origin of coordinate system is where an object's position is 0, 0, 0, which means sort of right in the middle of the axes. But where do we say that is on the Earth? Well, as it turns out, it's pretty arbitrary. Now, changing coordinate systems will change the measurements taken. If we have a little dot in the middle of this coordinate system, we can see that the red coordinate system will see it as having a negative x value and a negative y value whereas the blue coordinate system will see it as having a positive y value and a positive x value. But the distance between two points always stays the same, regardless of where your frame of reference is. So, if you're on the pink coordinate system, the distance between these two objects might be, you know, five centimeters. And if you're in the blue coordinate system, it'll be the exact same distance. Now the same is true for differences in speed. So if you are in a coordinate system that's moving, say a train, uh, and you compare the difference between two cars, 
um, that are both moving, then whether you're on a train or whether you're on the station, you will be able to tell that one car is faster than the other and by exactly how much. This concludes the theory. Uh, we have covered coordinate systems as well as uh, various frames of reference and what we define to be as stationary. Let's go on to some questions. Question 4. In an Olympic running event, which of these objects is in a different frame of reference to all of the others? Well, we'll start with A, the Earth. Now the Earth will be our stationary frame of reference. So if everything else is moving and the Earth isn't, then the Earth will be the one that's in a different frame of reference. Alright, let's take a look at the other options. The track that the athletes are running on. Now, relative to the Earth, the track isn't moving, because unless we have some crazy sort of conveyor belt or an airline carrier or something like that, uh, aircraft carrier, we have a track that is affixed to the Earth, so it's in the same frame of reference. It's stationary, it's not moving. A spectator, similarly, isn't, isn't really moving relative to the Earth, to the track, is usually sort of sitting there watching the athlete. And if we look at option D, the runner, the runner is actually moving relative to the track and relative to the Earth and relative to the spectators. And so it's the runners that are in different frames of reference because they're not stationary. Question 5. Using the Earth as a stationary frame of reference, a car is moving at 60 kilometers per hour. What is its speed as measured from the driver's frame of reference? Now from the driver's frame of reference, we say that the, the car that he's in is stationary. So that means that the car isn't moving. And rather than the car moving, it's the road outside that's sort of zooming past him at 60 kilometers per hour. Now, what about from the frame of reference of a truck heading the opposite direction at 50 kilometers per hour relative to the Earth? Well, the truck will be able to tell that the difference between his speed and the road speed is 50 kilometers per hour. And he'll also be able to tell that the difference between this driver's speed and the road speed is 60 kilometers per hour. Because the differences between speeds don't change when we change frames of reference or coordinate systems. So if he knows that he's moving at 50 kilometers uh, different to the road, he sees the road moving past, um, and he sees that the other driver is moving at 60 kilometers uh, in the opposite direction, then for him, he'll be adding the distances, uh, the uh, speeds rather, together. And so he'll deduce that uh, if the truck is stationary, then the other car is moving at 110 kilometers per hour. Question six. In the pink coordinate system, where is the blue dot? Well, Here's our pink coordinate system. It has a y-axis and not much else, so it's a one-dimensional coordinate system. If we look at the blue dot, it lines up with y equals 4. So, in the pink coordinate system, the blue dot is at y equals 4. Now let's take a look at a different coordinate system. Uh, in the blue coordinate system, where is the blue dot? Now here, we have a 0 in the middle, then going down here, rather than having a zero at the top and going up as we travel down the board. And so obviously the position of the blue dot is quite different. We find that its position is at y equals minus 2 because that lines up with this part of the coordinate system. Interestingly enough, the red dot is at y equals 1 in both systems. So, part C. What is the distance between the two dots in the pink system? Now in the pink coordinate system, the pink dot is at 1, and the blue dot is at 4. And the distance between 1 and 4 is 3. So, in the pink coordinate system, the distance between the two units is 3. Now, let's look at the blue system. What's the distance between the two dots in the blue system? Here, the pink dot is at y equals 1, and the blue dot is at y equals minus 2. The difference between 1 and minus 2 is 3 units. So we see that in the blue coordinate system, the distance between the two objects is also exactly 3 units. So we can see that by changing coordinate systems, although the positions of the objects that we measured might change, 
the distance between two objects will stay the same. This concludes this section. Today we've learned about various different frames of reference as well as coordinate systems. Thank you.